What's up you guys, so in today's video I'm going to be talking about one of my newest favorite players. And I know that I've been mentioning this a lot at the beginning of my videos, but I've, I just have been finding out tons of new amazing musicians out there, and in part it's all thanks to you guys and your suggestions for different videos. Now I just want to mention real quick, I have been having some hand problems, and that's why I haven't been putting out so much content as of late. But I am starting to feel a little bit better which means that I'm going to get back on the horse and start giving you um, the content that you so want and have been asking for on a more frequent basis. All right, so getting to the actual lesson, I'm going to be talking about Nick Johnston. And I really, really, really love his playing style and his compositional style. In terms of, of playing style, I like to think of him as a mix in between Envy Malmsteen, Guthrie Govan, and Steve Ray Vaughan. He has a little bit of a mix in between all those guys, and he also has a very particular... Um, very original sound in, in his playing and his compositions. Now I really, really enjoy his compositions. I really enjoy the way that he blends harmony and he borrows from different scales and he, he turns to, to modulate in, in certain tunes. And I also obviously like the, the fact that he's a, a crazy shred monster and he just can play anybody's head off um, with, tense, with intense, um, crazy fast runs and his crazy um, hybrid picking. And all the, the, the wonderful things that he does. Now with most of my lessons, I've divided this lesson into two different parts. I'm going to be talking about the different scales and musical concepts that he uses. And I'm going to be talking about the actual phrasing that he likes to do. So let's get with it. The first scale I'm going to be talking about is the major scale and it's, and it's different modes. Now if you listen to, to his records, you're going to listen to, you're going to find a little bit of Lydian here and there. You're going to find a little bit of Dorian here and there. But mostly you're going to find a lot of minor scale, so Aeolian or, or the natural minor scale. Now he likes to blend different minor tonalities in between his playing. So he might switch from Dorian to the natural minor scale here and there. He also borrows from the blues scale here and there, and he also borrows a lot from the pentatonic scale. The next scale I'm going to be talking about is the harmonic minor scale. Now he likes to borrow the natural seventh from this scale. He uses it a lot. He tends to blend different blues licks and add the natural seventh in between those licks or add different tonalities or or add different notes from different modes. So he might go, um, he might play up in a pentatonic or blues lick and fall into a natural seventh and then go into a flat six, things like that. Now the harmonic minor scale has a construction of one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, natural seventh. The next scale I'm going to be talking about is the melodic minor scale, which has a construction of 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. This is again an, another type of minor scale, and he might borrow here and there. He might use the altered scale, which is the seventh mode of the melodic minor scale. Um, he might add that here and there, sparingly, but he uses both the harmonic minor and the melodic minor scale. Um, you could probably say mostly in terms of his harmonies. He likes to blend them by using a concept called um, modal interchange. And what this means is that you borrow different chords from different tonalities, different parallel ton tonalities. Now what I mean by parallel it means that they fall side by side. So he might do a D minor scale and he might borrow some chords from D Dorian or he might do the D minor scale and take some chords out of D melodic minor or D harmonic minor. Now an easy way of looking at modal interchange is by looking at this table right here. 
I've added the different chords that stem from the natural minor scale or Aeolian, the chords from the harmonic minor scale, and the chords from the melodic minor scale. Now there's two things that you should notice. The first thing is the, the differences in the actual construction of the scale, because they are three different scales. At the harmonic minor scale, and you'll have a natural six and a natural seven at the melodic minor scale. The other thing I want you to look at is how those changes in the scale change the actual qualities of those chords because that affects the way that the chords within that scale are constructed. So for example, you have a flat three major seven in the natural minor scale, but you have a flat three major seven sharp five in both the harmonic minor and the melodic minor. So for example, let's take this progression right here. We're going to do a one minor seven chord. We're going to do a flat three major seven sharp five chord, which, which is from the melodic minor scale or the harmonic minor scale. It's, it's in both of those scales. I'm going to take the chord that stems from the seventh degree of the harmonic minor scale, which is a fully diminished chord. I'm going to move that chord up a flat third because all diminished chords can be moved in flat thirds until you, you reach the octave. So I'm just going to move it up uh, a flat third just to, to get some movement in there. Now the next chord I'm going to be using is a flat 6 major 7 sharp 11 chord which is borrowed from the D minor scale. And then I'm going to do a 5 altered chord. The dominant 5 chord, you could be say that it that stems from the harmonic minor scale, but then I'm, in, I'm adding a sharp 5, which is just plain old barring, just plain old playing on an altered chord, um, which is from the melodic minor scale. So we have D minor 7, F major 7 sharp 5, C sharp diminished, diminished seventh, I mean, E diminished seventh, B flat major seven sharp eleven, and A seven sharp five. In terms of phrasing, the first thing I'm going to be mentioning is some fast runs or some fa fast scalar runs. And I was watching one of his live clinics, and he likes to mention that when he when he plays some of his faster linear stuff, he likes to do a movement which goes three, two, one, two, one, which has nothing to do with intervals, but it's more of a permutation type of thing. So, for example, if I'm playing the D minor scale in the first string. I'm going to go for the third note, which is this one, second note, first note, second note, first note, and then go down the scale. same thing could be done going up. So the next concept is scale weaving. And this is something that I've been mentioning in, in some of my latest videos. This is something that a lot of people actually do, which is nothing more than a way of visualizing a scale or an arpeggio over a different scale, over a bigger scale. Now in the playing of Nick Johnston, I've applied scale weaving over arpeggios. Now, in the example I'm going to give you, I'm using the D minor major 7 chord, and I'm playing it over the D melodic minor scale, which is an arpeggio that fits perfectly over that scale. Now you can take a look at the diagram right here, and it shows you three different types of dots. You have the black dots, which is the root. You have the gray dots, which are the arpeggios, the notes within the arpeggios. 
and you have the white dots, which are the rest of the notes within the scale. Now I've created a lick interweaving the notes of the arpeggio, the notes of the melodic minor scale, and some chromatic system in between at all. So here we go. Now another thing that Nick likes to do a lot is a pentatonic or blues based Stevie Ray Vaughan style lick. Now the, he mentions this in, a, in an interview he does with, with Jan Anderton's channel. Now you can look this up by, by typing the captain meets Nick Johnston over the search bar at YouTube. What he mentions here is the use of a very cool pentatonic based lick. <laughs> find a link to my website on the description box below and find the tabs for all these for all these links and diagrams and everything I'm talking about in the actual lesson. Now a very cool thing that he has been doing as of late is the use of his bridge. I like to call it a bridge pull. Now what he's doing is he's playing a note and he's pulling or tugging on the, on the bridge. So he might go something like this. Now all I'm doing is tugging on the bridge as soon as I hit the specific note that I want to pull the bridge on. So for example, I want to do, for this example, I'm doing F, E, D. And I want to pull on the bridge every time I hit the E. Another type of similar phrasing thing he does is these bends, which when I listen to them, for me it almost sounds like a like a car shifting gears. Um, so it's something like and that's also something that he's been doing quite a bit of as a flame. You can check it out on his Instagram videos. And you can check it out on some of his videos on his YouTube channel while he's jamming. The last thing I'm going to be talking about is his use of hybrid picking or chicken picking. This is another thing that he's been using a lot, a lot, a lot of. Especially, again, in his latest Instagram posts. Now, there's two ways I'm going to mention his use of, of hybrid picking. First way is by using some hammer-ons and pull-offs, as well as his right hand, um, the fingers on his right hand, for the actual hybrid pick. I'm giving you a lick which is based on the D minor scale again. And as for the last type of hybrid picking he likes to do, um, is something using intervals. So for example, I could go to the 10th position, 10th fret on my guitar, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing some thirds based on the natural minor scale. Now another thing he likes to apply when he's doing this is the use of, of palm muting, which is another technique that he likes to frequent. It helps to give the, the music a bit of more of a, a percussive and dynamic sound. So here's an example of that. So that's it for this video. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Remember to hit the, the alert button right next to the subscribe button, which notifies you whenever I have a new video out. Um, it's, it's a little bell um, icon that's right there. Um, you can also hit the like button if you want. You can leave your comments below, add some suggestions. Um, I already have a, a kind of an extensive waiting list, and I am working on them. If I have something that I can, that I can work on, ahead of time because I've already researched then I'll probably move that a little bit um, to the front but I am I want you to know that I am working and I'm, I'm listening to all the guys that you have that you guys have been suggesting and thanks a whole bunch for the for the support and you can also follow me on any social media I'm on Instagram I'm on Facebook I'm on Twitter of course I'm on YouTube um, so so yeah thanks again for watching see you guys later